Welcome to Porsche Test Track in my McLaren 720S GT3. This one's in the exclusive series. This will be an endless endurance race with very little off-track cutting. I've done this race a couple of times now and I was very surprised how easy it was. So this time around, I'm going to try to get to the perpetual point with taking very few off-track cuts. In fact, I'm gonna to try to do it without any, but there's gonna be a little bit of off-track driving, but look at that. That is not off-track. And keep watching for the bus stop. Not off-track, not off-track. I was driving in areas that looked off-track. Same with right here, not off-track. However, that's off-track. I didn't mean to do that. I was just taking the corner a little bit too aggressively. You gotta give up a little bit here and there because you can't afford to go slow if you want to do an endless endurance race. You've got to go very fast and you have to have fast back-to-back -back lap times. So if you have a really bad lap, you're never gonna see the perpetual point. Like that's bad and then this is bad. So this isn't gonna be a great lap, but not horrible. I just can't afford to do too much of that. So you look at this, watch for the little flash of red on my distance once in a while then you know I'm going off track a little bit. Now we're not gonna be going through this whole race that would take way too long. I'm going to be doing some highlights and be doing some calculations along the way. So we're gonna warp ahead here a little bit at four times speed. And you know what? This is even gonna be a little bit slow. So I'm going to hyperdrive this thing in a bit here and we'll just warp ahead a bit. So here we are at lap nine and I'm not at the perpetual point yet. Although my first time doing this race, I took the two traditional cuts, which I will show you in a while, I took those every single lap and I was at the perpetual point by now. I couldn't believe it. You couldn't even tell I really hit the perpetual point because the traffic just never thinned out. So you could do it that way, but I wanted to see how few laps it would take for me to reach my daily M dollar maximum. Now watch what happens with this bot. It's kind of interesting. Um, I really like how the bots pay a little more attention sometimes. See, he's gonna give up the lane. I like that. Okay, so here we are at lap 13, and that's because I'm hitting the perpetual point here. Now watch, no bots except for that one, okay? So a lot of people ask me, how do you know when you've hit the perpetual point? Watch closely. Coming up to this, there'd be very few cars. So I've got this one car and one way off in the distance there. Watch the distance, this is important, and I'm gonna really point it out for you. Okay, you see how there's several cars. In fact, there's three of them. That's how you know you've hit the perpetual point. So step one, the bots get really thinned out and it looks like you're not gonna make it and then you get a group like this. Now, one clean lap is 2.03 kilometers. I've gone 13 laps, so 26.39. I've only banked 26.11, so I only wasted 0.28 kilometers so far, which is only 20 meters a lap. So I have stayed substantially on track to get this far. Like, that's a shocking amount. Uh, in a lot of endurance races that other people run, they go off track more than that by accident. So that's why you gotta watch really carefully to where you can and can't drive off track. And don't be afraid to give up a little bit here and there. Okay, so you'll notice that my timer is getting quite low. So I'm gonna drive this really carefully and see what this looks like. Like how much can I build? So I'm taking this uh, at the line here. At the last line, I was at 11 seconds right before the line. Here, about 23, 22, so I built around, uh, around 11 seconds. But I really don't wanna come this far and then lose. Oops, I really got sideways. I accidentally uh, bumped the volume button. So I'm deciding to take some more of the traditional cuts because I'd like to fill up my timer at this point. Bots at this point are driving faster than a fully upgraded car. So I wanna fill up the clock a little bit so if I make a stupid mistake, I've got some catch up time. It's easy to make some silly mistakes at this point of the race and also the bots are hyper aggressive here. And you're gonna see that in a minute here. Let's see here, I'm trying to get in front of this guy and we get tangled up and he is not gonna give it up. See that? So you got really aggressive bots. So I'm gonna take some more traditional cuts here. You've already seen how to take this cut on the last lap so I'm gonna do that again. If you get that right, you don't even lift off the throttle. And then I'm gonna really, little bit of breaking point here, really punch it through the bus stop and then stay full throttle. And again, if you get this right, 
You could stay full throttle. I got to get off a little bit so I don't clip that wall. And then watch for the bots that will overtake you and pit you if you're not careful. We're going to go four times regular speed for a little bit here. And, you know, at the line, I'm going to warp ahead some more because this takes a while. So here we are at lap 30. I've totally filled up my timer several times by now. And I want you to see how close the bots are. That's because I started running some faster lap times and then they bunch up a little bit like this. So then I started doing less cutting because I didn't need to because there were so many bots to pass. When they start getting spaced out again, you can do some more aggressive cutting to lower your lap times and they'll group up a little bit. You'll notice I get extremely close to hitting bots sometimes and that's because I know where they're going to drive and when. After the perpetual point, they don't change. Leading up to the perpetual point, you have to keep adjusting. Let's talk about settings. You need to have all assists off. If you don't know about that, check out this other video that shows you what happens. Tilt B is best, and I use sensitivity too. There's no real right or wrong thing. Sensitivity zero, sensitivity four or five. But if you start getting higher than five, um, you're gonna start to get kind of twitchy in the corners and it's gonna be easier to lose it. Also more twitchy off track which is gonna mean more skidding, which is gonna make you slower. Boy, did I ever waste a lot of time there. Okay, the reason why we're looking at this now is because I'm gonna stop right away. According to my math, 78.91 and a little bit should be enough. And I wanna see how accurate my calculations are, so I'm gonna go back a little bit. Now, I'm not gonna go too far back because I don't wanna have to come this close just to go a little bit more. So I'm gonna stop at 78.93, very close to 78.92, and we'll see what that does for me. Now, fame is not great. Not horrible, but not great compared to doing an F1 race. However, look at that. I was ridiculously close. I mean, that's like a matter of a meter or two. So as far as how much on track I did, 1.99 kilometers per lap, which means I was only wasting about 40 meters per lap, which is very good. 25 minutes and 55 seconds of actual drive time. So there you have it, an easy single race option to get all of your daily M dollars. It is certainly easier than the Silverstone F1 race that I've been doing, but it does take a little bit longer. Thank you for joining me. I hope you found some helpful tips.